specialty store kind of weekend because the beer I got is from Aldi. Do you have Aldi Ooh. where you're at, Jill? Yes, we do. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Trader Joe's, which, uh -huh. yeah, Aldi owns. Okay, so you're Trader not Joe's, not Aldi's. Yeah, actually, we have both. Okay. Um, there is an Aldi's in L.A. now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. How cool. We don't get Aldi. I want Aldi. Aldi's, I mean. <laughs> There's like three just in my side of town. Oh, wow. So much. Yes. We have Trader Joe's started here where okay. I'm at, specifically in the South Bay oh, of Los Angeles. So okay. we have, have one. I've got a Trader Joe's like, like several in, in a mile Ooh. from my house. <laughs> okay. I love Aldi's. I mean, it's small, so it's not overwhelming. Trader Joe's, I went there once and it was a little overwhelming. Yes. So Aldi's isn't overwhelming. <laughs> Funnily enough, I forgot that they don't bag your groceries for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I brought a big purse and I bought one of their bags. So I'm sitting there, you know, trying to put everything in my purse. And I'm like, and I bought a lot. The funny thing is, I was so excited because everything I bought just about was $3 each. I'm like, $3, $3, $3. Nice. <laughs> and then when she, you know, calls out the total, I was like, well, I guess $3 adds up. <laughs> But the six pack of beer I bought was only $6, which is awesome. And it's really good. It's a red ale, which is one of my favorites. And it's not too hoppy like that last red ale I had. It's, it's very just amber, just very calm and smooth. Oh, where's my camera? I can't tell where I am. Ah, okay. There. Oh, there cool. Go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> called Boot Tread, a Belgian amber ale, which is probably why it's not hoppy, which is good because I don't want anything hoppy. Not when it comes to a red ale. And I had one the other night and I loved it. It was just perfect. It's like the perfect everyday beer. It's not heavy. Um, it's probably not as many calories as say like a stout or something. So it's just the perfect everyday beer. And the price was great. $6 for a six pack. Where's my camera? Okay. <laughs> cool. I know. I know. I'm, like, I can't. I'm so tiny in the corner that I can't tell where I'm at. Can y'all see? Yes. See? And you've oh, gotten good tiny. at that, Lola. <laughs> she taught me. She taught me. I didn't know how to do it before. And it's very bubbly. I like that. It's very, very bubbly. Um, clear. I can see through it. Got a little bit of a head. Oh, the, um, the top came, the little, that part came mm. off. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit of a head, about half an inch ahead, which is just perfect. Just very smooth looking. Got a lot of little bubbles. It's got a little bit of a malt smell, not too much. Perfect red ale. Nice. Perfect. It reminds me of there's this um, medieval festival that we used to go to. We haven't been in a few years, but we used to go every year in Gainesville. And they have a red ale there that's made by a brewery there in Gainesville. And it's called Hogstown Red Ale. And this reminds me of it so much. So when I taste it, I feel like I'm on the stands watching the night and um, the knights do their um, jousting and one time I fell off of the stand because I had too many of these. I fell right off. And I was at the top. I fell right oh off. I was like, oopsies. So I feel like I'm watching, you know, the, the knight and the queen, or the king and the queen come up and the um, horses go around and it brings me back. Cool. Was that at um, Ren Fair or Medieval Times? Or something it, was, like that? it was a medieval fair. It's in Gainesville. Cool. It's every January and it's called Hogstown. Neat. And I love it. We haven't <laughs> been in a few years, but it, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. So this takes me back to that. <laughs> that, that beer is made by a, a real Belgian brewery. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, it's okay. made by Brewery Martens in hmm. Belgium. I don't know okay. if the beer is made in Belgium or whether uh -huh. the beer is made in the United States. Okay. If you look at, if you look at the, the art on the label, it actually uh -huh. um Kind of, uh, it looks so, a little bit like Deschutes early. Okay. Before, and it also looks a little like Fat Tire. Yeah. Um, so I'm yeah. not sure where it all it it, might have been made in Belgium. Well, okay. It says brewed and bottled by Brewery Martins. What's NV? NV? Nevada. Nevada. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, so they do. They mm -hmm. so they brew it here under the brewery Martens. Mm. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know about that because after the NV, it says Ketting Drugweg 34 B 3950 Bocholt, Belgium. No, then it's made in Belgium. Yeah, I think that NV no, is import. just part of it. I you think it's import for six dollars for six pack. Yay, all, <laughs> Yay all the I want to go back and get more. I mean, there's one right down the street from me. Uh, I'm like, yes. I also got a bottle of wine for three dollars. I haven't opened it yet. Aldi, that is why I want Aldi to come to I Oregon and not just Trader Joe's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same here. Aldi. Wow. <laughs> I was like shaking. I was so excited. I was like, I want it all. Give it to me. <laughs> And, well, and then just, yeah. in, just in time for uh -huh. Oktoberfest season. Mm. Ooh. I love Oktoberfest. Hail, hail, oh, Ninkasi. Ninkasi. Ninkasi is so good. It is. It's mm -hmm. delightful. And, oh, uh, good. I know Oktoberfest runs from September 21st, I believe, through the middle of October. I uh, but I know it starts today. Okay, cool. yes, happy, awesome. Happy October fast. Yay! I'm using, I'm using my Mazama glass because uh, oh. Mazama is also a fantastic, a fantastic Belgian brewery. And um, okay, all my other glasses. So we got a bit of a Belgian day going on too, huh? Uh, this, <laughs> I love October fast beers. Yes, October fast. It's not too hoppy, not too malty. Good. Super light. I had an Oktoberfest from a brewery here in Jacksonville that was excellent. I was very happy about that. This is only five and a half percent, forty IBU. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want Ninkasi's Oktoberfest, also pick it up really soon because they only ship it through October fourth. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bummers. Absolutely delightful. Just enough hops to let you know you're drinking a beer, but mm, more than that, you, like you, can, you can drink this with anything on your plate. I love Absolutely that. Anything it's versatile. Exactly. Whether and you're bread, meat, meatless, dessert, everything. And see, that's what I look for in an everyday beer. That's part of what I mean when I say everyday beer. It doesn't have to be any special occasion. You don't have to match it to a menu. It's just anytime you want a beer, you can pull it out and drink it. You know, you know what's mm. great about uh, about all our beers and the tea. Uh -huh. It's usually great with all kinds of cheese. I love cheese. I love cheese. <laughs> Gosh, I love cheese. It doesn't get much for me to get excited. That that's my food. Yeah, that gets me excited. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, just like Jill can't have caffeine, I can't have caffeine right now. Oh. Well, is it the diet or yes. a less? Yeah. Yes. You've been doing so well. Yeah. I'm losing, I'm losing weight. I'm now doing large and pants. Oh wow! Awesome! Congratulations, that's Linda. <laughs> Like down from uh, down, I started I believe at um, a total of two hundred nine pounds. I'm okay. down to one eighty three. So that's wonderful. That's Amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, you've worked very hard for it too. Yeah, you guys have been walking everywhere. <laughs> Crazy and miles every other day is. Yeah. It seems to act on your brain a little like a drug. Like when I don't walk. Endorphins. Yeah. I start turning in circles because I want. Yeah, to you need that, you need that activity. Energy. Yeah, yeah, you guys feel that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do, oh, sorry, Lola. I was going to say, I went to a dog park today um, and I walked quite a bit, I chased quite a bit. <laughs> a lot of chasing. <laughs> a lot of chasing. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm tuckered out too. Yeah, dogs like that sort of. Uh, yeah. The, the chasing is uh, yeah, that's a favorite thing. And yeah. the running, they love the running, the running away from from owners. It's like, come back! And I'm like, if I stand here, eventually she'll come back. I'm like, no, I don't want you know. I got to keep her in my sight. 
Mm-hmm. But we do have a bit of news. Um, okay. Let's mm-hmm. see. Is there one you'd like to pick, Lola? Um, I was reading one at the dog park. I had it up at the dog park. Um, well, I, the beer, wine, fridge of Boston. I, I, I think I removed like two of them. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. There was one I was reading and it's gone. Um, but I was looking at the um, beer fridge one too. Oh, yeah, the IOT. Now, I'm not sure I'm ready for a smart refrigerator or anything. I'm I don't I'm smart enough for my own refrigerator. I can read and tell you how <laughs> cold it is. I don't I think I'm smart enough for I don't need to know exactly how many bottles of beer I can look and see. So I'm I'm not in any <laughs> mind to to pay good money for this yet, but who knows, maybe in the future. Well, <laughs> Luckily, this that's this is definitely one you can you could make it yourself. Lola. Oh, okay. I um, how? It'd be using Raspberry Pi. Yeah, you take a Raspberry Pi and you uh-huh. wire up the door sensor. And okay. I I believe there might be a, a balance board. Yes. <laughs> and if you, it's listed oh. as being a beginner project. I think okay. either you or I could do this. Yeah. That confused me about the Wii Balance Board. I'm like, were we playing Wii Golf in here? What's going on? Okay, so that's what you have. Do you I'm have sure to- what a Wii Balance Board? Do you know what a Wii Balance Board is, uh, Jill? Uh, no, I've never used one. I've heard of it. <laughs> never used one. It sounds like something a gymnast would use. <laughs> so would you have to put your beer on the balance board? Because it's got a be able to use the scale what yeah the well it, if it's detecting the number of bottles inside your fridge then either it's using it to weigh the bottles yeah or... is we the oh, name of the company it's it's the the w-i-i just like we go for we, oh oh we i see sports. oh 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 okay <laughs> yeah Cyber says it's... it's an input device for the we okay oh. So I guess you have to put your beer on the balance board. How else would it weigh it? Um, that is possible. And then and then have it uh, report to the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. You have to have a door sensor to detect uh, if your door is open or closed, temperature sensor. Yeah, <laughs> the door sensor really isn't that difficult. Yeah. I am familiar with the Wii, you know, skateboard. <laughs> so that I'm I've done. thinking it means like a skateboard. You're going to put a skateboarder in there or something? <laughs> Set your beer on and it can tell, yeah. okay, 12 ounces is gone. You're down one beer. What if somebody mean took a beer and put a bottle full of water back so that you were fooled and you, thought you had a whole thing of beer and really you just have a whole thing of water bottles? <laughs> Oh, that would be cool. That's so funny. That is, that is a homegrown hack. That yeah. is, yeah, that's one way to <laughs> hack to make it seem like you have more beer. Like if you have a roommate and you want to drink their beer, you can hack it by putting water in the bottles and putting them back. You won't have a roommate for long or a place to live. Yeah, that's true. I think I like the I think I might like the camera idea better where the the camera actually takes photos of her yeah. through the glass. Uh-huh. <laughs> that actually makes more sense. Huh? Yes. And sorceress earlier when you said uh, the Wii board, I, I thought you were talking about W E E. So I, I didn't I think that was the thinking board. of the of the console. Tiny board. <laughs> I'm like, what? Wii board? <laughs> You can only get one bottle on it. Uh, the yeah, the only uh, I get we balance board. It, it's it looks yeah. like it's definitely for the we. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but I I did not know that you could hack a we balance board. Is it? I wonder if it's like a, a hackintosh type project where maybe you know you get it to report to the Raspberry Pi instead of to the Wii system. Well, okay. Yeah, I would exactly. guess so. I would guess so. Uh, and how much? Yeah. How much does a Wii Balance Board cost? I mean, I don't know. Oh, oh, Wii Balance, you can find those, you can find those anywhere. You okay. You can find them off Facebook Marketplace for like Okay. Okay. 
on Amazon brand new, they're like 80 bucks. But okay. Uh, I mean, people don't generally <laughs> use them for very long. Yeah. 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 I think I used mine for like four weeks and then. Oh, okay. I stopped. Using mine. I, I played Wii tennis for a little bit and then I was like, I'm bored. I don't want to do it anymore. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Linux Book Pro, you are right. The boards are kind of uh, big and uh, they say that they could use that extra space for more beer. I, I would. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I it feels unnecessary to me. I don't need to know how much how many pounds of beer I have or whatever. I'll just look. Well, oh, so I, if I'm at the store and I want to know what's in the fridge, I might uh, I might actually appreciate it. But it would definitely uh, I think I'd definitely take the camera route rather than a Wii balance board. Okay. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> I think it, it, have it take photos and then just <laughs> and then just program a new program to count the bottles of beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd rather do that. There's there's a you know a detection AI for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, already for the pie. So that that's <laughs> yeah. You could do the what's the connect thing where it throws all the dots. And the connect could see like <clears throat> could gauge the water the bottles the beer bottles and it could be like i detect 10 beer bottles yeah actually oh, yeah <laughs> uh we we had an um, lww we had talked about a um um an ai vision sensor for the camera uh -huh. that would detect the number of bees in a beehive oh, okay uh, to to help out the colonies mm -hmm. and um that could be used <laughs> <laughs> and it's easier to detect beer because it doesn't move okay. <laughs> so, unless you move it <laughs> didn't they didn't they have to paint all the bees that were that were being counted um this one actually was a detection it actually would detect them mm -hmm. it was amazing but there are ones that that yeah you had to had they they had to put little dots on them but this one was yeah. a, a better <laughs> I remember somebody teaching me uh, how, yeah. to, how to catch the bee and put the dot on the. Oh, the cool! Bee, like right near its, right on top of its thorax, and I was too scared to do it myself. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, that that would definitely make it easier for the camera. That was the issue with the project that we had covered was that it was having a hard time with um, the bees, depending on the size. Mm -hmm. detecting especially when there's like you know thousands in one little place yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the ai has gotten better and better so <laughs> that is true ai's ai's in general and if you have if you have a program that can that can kind of learn on its way then you're set yeah <laughs> cybernaut talked about open cv he said that could be used for it he said that has it baked in I googled OpenCV because, of course, I have no idea what that is. Um, it's a library of programming functions. Oh, mm -hmm. libraries are good when you're... I, I'm not sure what language that would be used with. Do we yeah, have... I see, I see OpenCV.org, but I'm yeah. not familiar with it at all. Me neither. Me neither. I have no clue. <laughs> It is aimed at it is aimed at real time computer vision. Originally developed by Intel. Original release nineteen years ago. Programming languages yeah. C plus and C. Well, okay. I would be uh, I I'd be kind of okay because cool. I I was taught C in school. Cool. All right. They have some tutorials. Open Open C V yeah. tutorials. Open source computer vision. Okay. Yeah, there's another con company um, called Luxonis Depth AI, uh -huh. and uh -huh. they are uh, actually going to send me a Raspberry Pi board with computer vision hardware on it. So okay. I'm looking forward to testing that. That's cool. <laughs> All right. The closest I got to Raspberry Pi is um, we, I don't think we still do, but we used to use Ras Raspberry Pi to get one of the desktops to call out to the TVs at our office that we had all around. Oh, so we great. Could, 
Yeah, so yeah. But we did run um, presentations and stuff on all the monitor, on the TV monitors, and every once in a while they would shut down, so I had to go and turn it off and turn it back on and wait for all the Raspberry Pi um, source data to come up and run through its thing. So that's that's cool. the closest I've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome, though, Lola. It's what a great cool. use. I know. Yeah. It's I'm cool. proud. <laughs> and too. I'm like, oh, I got to start up the Raspberry <laughs> Pi. I got to restart the Raspberry Pi. And everyone's looking at me like, it's early in the morning. Why are you eating Raspberry Pi? It's like 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, blood ice. Uh. <laughs> oh, great, Linda. I, I was just going to tell you that my hubby, hubby said you were a bit quiet on the stream. Oh, I we've been we've been working for like three minutes to try to fix this. I'm yeah. maxed out on all my I'm actually considering uh, going to my my headphone mic. Just trying to gain actually, yeah, you, oh, sound, you sound good right now. Just turn your, your gain down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how how does this sound? Does that sound does that yeah. sound better? Much better. Okay. <laughs> much better. Yeah. Yay! The learning, learning, awesome. learning is fun. Yeah. Is this the first time you are using Jitsi? <laughs> this is not the first <laughs> time. But... It's not the first time we've used Jitsi, but trying to figure out all the intricacies with Jitsi because until yes. now we've used Hangouts. Yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. So <laughs> we used Discord a few times. I saw and... I heard Discord last time, I think. I won't listen to the show. <laughs> now now Jitsi seems to be working a bit better for us, which I'm really happy Yay. about. Yay. Mm -hmm. Open source. Yeah. Yay. Open source. Cool. Open source cool. FTW. Yes. I love that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So now is Discord not open source? I never noticed. Cor it correct. Is it is not. It is proprietary, but it's a very good. Okay. <laughs> it is very good. And yeah. It's free to us, but but it's yeah. nice. I like this. This mm -hmm. is good Jitsi. Yeah, Jitsi is it's it is the the it's uses, you know, WebRTC and most uh -huh. of the other applications out there like Zoom and uh -huh. and and you know, all the different uh, variations um, on that use WebRTC and it's, okay. it's, yeah. So, but Jitsi was the original. <laughs> okay, go Jitsi. It's very clear. I mean, it's really yeah. good. It's not grainy at all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why I like it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we use it at Linux Gamecast. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, two small bits of news. I know some people uh, Some people are going to be super happy to hear that Vlad, the imp ailer from Cascade <laughs> Brewing, is back. <laughs> it's the 12% monstrosity wow. described as a hug in a boozy rug. Wow, okay. <laughs> so uh, take, uh, it's a mix of quad and blonde ales that are okay. aged in bourbon and wine barrels. Mm. Take a look and make sure that you make sure that you're uh, you're begging your local brew supply for it. Beg hard, mm -hmm. and also just in time for me to move. Oh, Pelican Brewing is open in is opening in Lincoln yeah. City. They're going to create a brand new brew pub. Nice in Lincoln city, just for me, just for you. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not going to open until 2021. Uh, well, it'll give you time to move. Yeah, it'll, it'll give me time to move there and then walk yeah. by the site every day, staring in the window. Are you? Open I now? love the picture on their site. They have a picture of a sunset that's gorgeous. They Beautiful. have uh, uh, some of their some of their best ones are Mother of Storms, Father uh -huh. of Tsunamis, and my favorite for winter, Bad Santa. Bad Santa. Bad. It's a Cascadian Aww. dark ale, and it's dark and rich and, and really, really wonderful. Oh. Oh. And uh, a non-alcoholic brewery, an actual whole brewery dedicated to non-alcoholic beer, is making the most exciting beer, and I can't get any. <laughs> it's oh. called Athletic Brewing. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I can't even get it through Total Wine. Why not? Oh. Do they still have it? Um, they have it, but it's not available for delivery to me. Oh. Which is really sad. 
where uh, where are the see uh date launch january uh, january 2016 no oop that's uh that's the athletics not the brewery <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah, Linda, Long if you find one that I can get and you can't, we could always send you some. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Athletic is in Stratford, Connecticut. Sadness. That's my side of the country. That is, that is your side of the country. There are more and more beers that I find I cannot get shipped to Oregon or Hawaii. Bummers. Or why. Bummers. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'll just... We try to make my own. <laughs> yeah, I've got a reason to make your own. And there are but there are other non-alcoholic beers out there that are decent, that uh -huh. are good for you know when when I go driving I don't drink at no. all. Yeah. Okay. So then I have you know like I have the non-alcoholic beer and that's it. Okay. See, that's when I'll drink soda or tea or coffee or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like non-alcoholic beer. Um, I know it used to be. It used to be that <laughs> the only non-alcoholic beer we could really get was like the the Miller Coors, and I think Bud had one. There's a Red Label one, and it was all really gross. <laughs> it's improved a whole lot because now it's actually considered beer instead of like just non-alcoholic fizzy water. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Cybernaut asked you, Linda, if you've ever made non-alcoholic beer. I have actually mm. made some of my beer non-alcoholic, and that actually involved heating it up to a specific temperature and holding it there for a number of minutes. Yeah. It, it seems like it would be harder because you naturally ferment when you're making beer so you would have to keep it from fermenting huh well no you actually do oh. ferment it you okay. ferment it and then you take the finished beer and you uh -huh. just cause the alcohol to leave it whoa so you're working extra hard to get rid of the alcohol yeah mine wound yeah. up tasting really bad <laughs> oh, <exactly. laughs> yeah. oh boy right it was all hops and I couldn't oh. like the, the malt wasn't there anymore. And I, it, it was definitely, I'm glad I only tried a gallon of it because it was. Uh, you only tried a gallon. I, mean, I only tried to make a gallon. I only made a gallon. I thought you were like, I only tried a gallon, glug, glug, glug. I don't yeah. like this glug, 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 but I got to finish. <laughs> it was my beer. You had to finish it. Someone has to drink it. No wasting. Not on my watch. No, ma'am. Yeah, that's that's right, Cyber. It does. It messes with the hop aromas and it oxidizes the beer, something terrible. Mm. So mm. people who are out there like Athletic Brewing that are doing it consistently mm. and they're doing it well and managing to avoid those problems and avoid all the off flavors are champions. They are. They are the true heroes. Mm -hmm. Science champions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's an Olympics for beer making. They would win it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've definitely gotten through all the news. Mm -hmm. So I guess I guess we get to grill. Oh, our yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So the first question is, is <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask the first question because I was talking to you about the dark crystal. Yeah. And you said, it makes me think of when I was 11 years old and it and the dark crystal inspired you to become an animator. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And part of that is, you know, for me, it was the, the magic that was captured with ina inanimate objects, mm -hmm. which were, of course, the puppets. And bringing them to life and how exciting that process is. Mm -hmm. You know, Jim Henson was amazing at, uh, amazing and created movement from an otherwise mm -hmm. static environment and brought them to life and mm -hmm. essentially created an animated painting. Okay. So to me, that was, that was, even though it wasn't animation in the traditional mm -hmm. sense, they were animating puppets. Yeah. Well, they were non live action. Yeah. So yeah. That's in mm -hmm. a sense that's animated. Yeah, animated puppets. Yes, yes. 
So, so do, would you describe yourself uh, kind of a, as an animator or as an artist or, or both? Is both. that <laughs> both? So you're kind of equal on. Yeah. Cause you have to, in order to be an animator, you have to have that, that discipline of the arts mm -hmm. behind it. So, in fact, with my students, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, with my students, I have to, uh, you know, make sure that they've had, they have to have four or five years of art and art background before they even take my animation classes. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they have to have a background in, you know, life drawing and sculpting and traditional painting and, you know, all the different art forms, because that's okay. what the studios want to see. You have to have an artist portfolio before okay. you start animating. So my, <laughs> my stick drawings definitely. <laughs> now, there are some people that are, you know, hired just for technical, you know, things like uh, doing, um, you know, video editing or, or, or putting scenes together, but the actual animation is done by artists. <laughs> okay. I'll how long have you been doing this? That <laughs> a long time. Yes. Yeah. So I actually, you know, I put this in the notes. I've been literally drawing and painting since before I could walk. And, okay. you know, I always had a dream of bringing my paintings to life and the, the, you know, the computer age helped me achieve that um, with lots of work and perseverance. And cause I was at the birth of it in animation and computer graphics. So, and I knew I wanted to, to make my paintings come to life. And uh, that's uh, one of my reasons I wanted to get into computing so bad, but I just, I love the computer anyways. I was already programming on them and, and uh, building them and taking them apart. So that was just a natural way to do my animation. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this. I know when it comes to Windows, people use Adobe and programs such as that for their, you know, computer renderings. Yes. What type of open source Linux programs do you like? Okay, Blackmagic DaVinci oh. Resolve. It has taken okay. over the industry. Uh -huh. because it's not open source. It is proprietary, okay. but it's very inexpensive. It's only okay. a few hundred dollars, and, and you have you own the license. It's not in the cloud. Okay, good. <laughs> I hate that. I was just talking about that yesterday, yeah. but I hate the stuff. Yeah, and that's what mm -hmm. the whole film industry is, is moving over to Vin da vinci okay. and because okay. it combines adobe premiere adobe okay. after effects okay. a lot of the color click correction tools so there are other options now than just adobe okay. <laughs> so, so when you say awesome. it, com it combines that you mean it's a lot like adobe or it actually has adobe in it it actually here's what's really cool you buy one piece of software you get the equivalent of premiere and after effects and wonderful? digital compositing in one software that's so you don't wonderful. have to pay for all, all the divisional, you know, that programs on, on Creative Cloud. That is excellent. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking about it. I was, yes, it was, no, it was actually today because um, my Lyft driver is a photographer. Oh, and he was cool. talking about spending $50 a month for Creative Cloud. And I said, mm -hmm. I used to do it. Um, I always intended to learn to use all the programs, but I never did. I yeah. really only used it for two programs. And it got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't justify having it anymore. So I went down to paying just for the one program. And then uh, when I was done with that, I, I could justify having any in design for my book is the one program I had. And after, oh, I, yeah. after <laughs> I self published my book, I was like, I don't need in design anymore. So I couldn't justify paying for it. So I want yeah. to find something um, open source, or at least like you said, inexpensive and non subscription. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's been a real issue because uh, teaching at a local community college yeah. because now uh, Adobe actually wants to stop giving us a blanket oh, license. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, my want God. They want to charge us per workstation, and that's uh -huh. ridiculous. Tell and I, station. Yeah. Wow. And I, I was already w moving my students over, over to open source anyway, Good. so Good. we're, we're going to be making that transition, and I'm working hard to make sure that it happens. <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> how how difficult is it to learn da vinci is 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 it on par with like gimp or i can open gimp but uh I think that, that might be about as far as well I it's can. it's more have you used kaden live or um, open shot 
Okay, so that's more in line with okay. with your an intro to DaVinci. It's a it's a video editing program. Yeah, as, as opposed is, to a shot is actually painting program. really simple for me to use. It's, yeah. It's it's very intuitive. Yes. Yeah, it is. And um now DaVinci is, you know, it, it it there is a learning process to it, but if you come from using Adobe Premiere or Final Cut or any of those other programs, it's really easy to transition over because they all kind of work the same. <laughs> Sad but, thing is I have to reteach myself. I used to use Caden Live all the time. I used yeah. to I used to be really good about taking the videos and chopping them up and turning them into little video bits and stuff and putting things on them. And then something happened and I just stopped doing it. And it's been probably two years since I did it. So I'm going to have to reteach myself all oh. of that, which sucks. Well, once you learn Caden Live and it's gotten, it's so much, it's gotten so much better, Lola. It's oh, really, good. really stable okay. now. They've really good. improved the interface. It, it runs a lot faster now. I love Caden Live, but there's just yeah. some tools that I don't have in it that I need okay. for professional yeah. work. But, and that's where DaVinci comes in? Yeah, that's where okay. DaVinci. So if you've learned Caden Live, okay. you can learn DaVinci. No, okay. no problem. Yeah. Try that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Does it work? Does it run on all Linux distros or just specific ones? It's, um, it, you know, originally intended for Red Hat, Red Hat, but you can run it on Debian and Ubuntu. Okay. Um, it doesn't run okay. quite as well on Ubuntu, but but that's changing. Okay. Um, it's 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 yeah. I've got it running on every distro. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay. Our, our producer loves Katie and live too. Yes. Okay. I love makes Katie life, live. It makes life a lot easier. I can, yeah. I can use it to a certain degree. It's not, <laughs> I'm a writer, not necessarily an artist, Yeah, or, but I can use it for certain, certain applications. Yeah. No, and it's definitely. Have, uh, Cybernaut, Cybernaut has a question. He wants to know how many penguins do you have in that room? <laughs> it's got to be more than the seven we can see. Oh, yes. I have, I have actually, the last I counted, it was almost 100. Oh, that's <laughs> so, a hundred. So, because I have a lot of penguins that are up higher that you're not seeing and, you know, that are put away. So, and that's um, amazing that that started because. We, we always want to do something unique at the Southern California Linux Expo, where we have uh, my group. I'm, I'm the co-coordinator of Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. Awesome. And, and that was, you know, one way that made us unique, you know, is we wanted something different at our booth. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we started collecting the penguins. So we had our army of penguins representing Linux. And so almost every year we win, we win the uh, uh, Spirit of Scale, the Best Scale Spirit Award. And we've okay. we've won most memorable booth because we're unique. We're not you know a regular, uh, you know like a, like what Red Hat would be and and whatnot. Not a we're a community booth and we can have fun. <laughs> so tell us about Linux Chicks. Oh what, boy, what exactly is Linux Chicks? Okay, Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. It's it's um, uh, actually a worldwide uh, club. That the the basic um, the basic premise is you just got to support women using Linux, and that's okay. it. That's there's nothing okay. you know. You don't have to be a woman to be in our group. In fact, half our 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 group are are men from Linux Gamecast and our oh, friends okay. at Linux Gamecast. <laughs> so you know, it's just all you have to do is support women in Linux, and you can be part of the Linux chicks. And good. what's unique about our chapter is we're uh, the longest running and also the only one left, honestly, in the oh, world. That's so yeah, sad. it's sad. There is one in Brazil, but they're not active anymore. So we're the only active one left. What's going on with people? Come on! I know. Well, I... you know what's happened is meetups have kind of taken over. Oh, I see. Okay. And, but as a result, the nice thing about that is that now at least it, it we're unique in that we still have Linux install fest. We teach, you know, okay. installing Linux. Uh, we have actually meetups that are workshops, Neat. installing Linux and, and installing yeah, Linux on that. the Raspberry. See, that would be perfect for me because I don't, I mean, I can teach myself stuff, but I much prefer to be there with somebody yes. so I can see them do it. Cause I'm a visual learner and I have to see exactly. people do it. So yeah. I would prefer that. 
Yeah. Well, you are part officially of the Linux Chicks LA, both of you. I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs> And if uh, both of you or either of you come to scale, you'll you'll be a part of the Linux Chicks Los Angeles for sure. You'll be That's you'll 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 be joining us at the booth. And <laughs> I, think, I, I think next I think next year that could be arranged. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Yay! We're gonna get Linda down to scale and Chi. So I'm so happy about that. <laughs> One day yeah. when I've saved the money, I'll come over there. So, and, and one of the other things we do at our booth, besides just showing all our, our beautiful penguins, is, you know, promoting our meetups that we have. And also, we do a project for each um, scale. Like this year, we did a Raspberry Pi photo booth. And it was so much fun. We got, we, we found tons of, you know, penguin masks and, and funny max, masks and emoticons that people could wear um, and take pictures of them in our photo booth. It was really, really Aww. fun. That's and adorable. Yeah, that was really, it was really, really fun. We might do that again because the community, of course, really love that. And that's what we're about, you know, sharing open source and knowledge to the community and um, supporting women. And um, I've also, um, we've done many raffles. Um, I had for several years in a, a row built um, a Linux computer, a three monitor gaming computer that we could raffle off to the community. And um, that helps us raise funds for our our community and then give back to the to uh, all the Linux users. <laughs> That's I, I, I've been <laughs> considering doing a, a homebrew project to try to support the homebrew community as well as introduce Linux further yeah. into it. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to find waterproof sensors so that. Oh, so it can, it can actually <laughs> test the temperature of the beer as not just while it's fermenting, but through the whole brew process from okay. boil all the way through to the progression of alcohol. Okay. It's it's a very complicated. It is. Thought. It's yeah. <laughs> it's very hard. Most of the sensors I have found don't don't go from boiling to non-boiling like yeah they, they won't hack like an environment where they're being boiled to death because uh -huh. they'll contain plastic so it's uh it's quite a project that i'd really love to get interested in if if there are other home brewers out there that would like to join me in the effort oh more, yeah more than welcome to get a hold of me because uh i'm sure we could actually make life a whole lot easier for beginner brewers if we could set something like this up. Oh, that would be amazing. You you, you need to do that, Linda, definitely, and Lola. 90% <laughs> of the time, it's always, well, I don't know what temperature, and I, I you know, they, putting a thermometer in boiling liquid is really scary, and laser thermometers are too inaccurate, mm -hmm. so... It winds up being, you know, kind of you have to do a balancing act and either you get burned or you have inaccurate temperatures and uh, I'd really love to solve this problem. Yeah. Oh, Raspberry Pi. That would be perfect. That's a perfect project for that. <laughs> and using using Linux and, and the Raspberry Pi would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to have a show where you teach us how to do it. Yeah. So how it <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm. I love teaching people how I do stuff. Love it. Yay. We got, we got some comments. Um, you, uh, Liz, Liz, um, Jill, you've also got two more willing members of um, Chicks. Oh. Um, Tugs and Cybernaut, who um, Tugs is Linda's husband, and Cybernaut is our awesome friend. He's just wonderful. Oh, so, wonderful. So you got two new members. Oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. Wonderful. I, I frequently geek out with Cybernaut oh, on, yeah, that's on scientific cool. stuff. Cool. Frequently. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Cybernaut. And also for being so active in chat. That's awesome. Yeah, he is awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. He comes on and keeps us entertained. <laughs> gives us lots of fodder. And he's in California, so he may actually oh. really go there. Oh, you should. You yeah. should. Yeah. Where, where are you? San Diego. San Diego. Oh, you're only two hours away. Come on. Yeah. Come on to scale. Yeah. <laughs> and, or come to one of our Linux Chicks LA meetups. <laughs> I think you should do that, Sai. 
<laughs> although, although he never shows us his face. We know what he looks like because he's accidentally put himself on camera before. He does show us his face. But maybe he'll make an exception for you. <laughs> he's an extremely interesting person. Very oh, interesting. Mm. <laughs> well, I, I know from experience you have a lot of computers, Jill. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You definitely have enough yes. to put in a museum. Uh, some of which I mm -hmm. I used to I used to work on when I was Yay. little. <laughs> yeah. Which one is our producer would like to know which one <laughs> is your absolute oh. favorite precious computer? Oh yeah, I gee, I had such a hard time deciding that one because they're all I I love them all for different reasons, you know. But I would have to say the ones I you know I'm I get really excited about telling people about is uh, my Deck Alpha dual processor 64 bit server from 1995. I've done lots of rendering on that. It was you know my workhorse for you know a, a lot of years. And uh, Digital Equipment Cor Corporation made the fastest processors ever made at the time and were the first to create a 64-bit processor. And then they actually made a 256-bit alpha processor. And then the company went under. <laughs> so oh. I never got a hold of a 256-bit one, but always wanted one. <laughs> and, you know, they were doing things that Intel or AMD haven't even done now, like 256-bit processors. You know, they're they're getting closer to that but they haven't created one yet and how old is is digital equipment's alpha <laughs> you know it was just so ahead of its time and gosh i had so many i listed the i have a pdp 11 terminal i don't have the big pdp 11 machine if i did i would have to buy um add an extra room onto the house <laughs> <laughs> um I got These are all my computers, yeah. and yes. this is my extra garage for my PDP. Yes, exactly. And uh, the computers, you know, I've, I'm a lot of these computers I'm talking about are behind me. I have over 100 in this room, but I have several hundred in the garage, so that I don't have space to put in this room. And I'm in the middle of actually, uh, within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start working on this room heavily. I'm going to be putting shelving in so I can put everything on display. You know, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> but but I have my other favorite computer is my Compaq Concerto. It was one of the first tablet computers and which ran uh, Windows 3.1 and but I put I got Linux on it. I worked really hard. <laughs> I got <laughs> Linux on it. <laughs> it's a 486, but it had, you know, getting the uh, the touch screen to work uh, was difficult under Linux, but I got that working. And of course, I love my Commodore 64 and my Atari ST. Um, <laughs> and behind me, I have a Deck Alpha. I have a SunSpark. I have an Indigo. Um, oh, you have a SunSpark. Yeah, I've got actually. I've got a couple of the Pizza Box Sparks behind me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I've got my Power Mac G4 Q wow, behind okay. my monitor. I have every generation of Mac. That wow. you can get some really so were you ones a too. big Mac person before you really got into Linux or both concurrently? I, I was using, I loved all operating systems. Okay. Okay. So it, That's it, didn't, fair. That's it didn't, fair. it didn't matter. And I've worked on both, you know, in okay. IT, I worked on both. So I love them all. And I've got, you know, I just put the latest version um, of uh, Debian PPC on my uh, Mac cube and it's still oh. running great. In fact, Okay. With Lin Linux on the Mac Cube, you can actually run 1080p video. Okay. <laughs> if you're using OS 10, you're lucky to get 720p to okay. play. <laughs> so, how do you find the balance between the claim that Mac does art better? Oh, uh, uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 nope. no, no, no. Because when I when I started in early animation, those the Mac computers were still black and white. <laughs> screens. I needed color. I had yeah. very high end 256, you know, um, color video cards, which was moon magic, you know, at the time. And, you know, the Mac classics were just black and white screens. Sorry, I can't, I couldn't animate on, on a Mac classic. 
you know, that they, they became popular in the desktop publishing later on when, you know, they were started using uh, color more, but in those early years, it was, it was, um, Unix based machines and, and, uh, DOS and windows, you know, because yeah. you could actually, you know, build a computer and put a color video card in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing art before there was Photoshop and Illustrator and any of the Adobe, you know, came along. And we were using DOS and and Windows 3.1 and Unix and then Linux. <laughs> so I remember yeah. ASCII when it was DOS. Yes. ASCII. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, I, having, <laughs> I remember having a Commodore 64. And there was the little, there was a program on a floppy, like on the floppy floppies. Yes. That it, it was a little guy that ran around a house, but Aww. it wouldn't work on a 64. It only oh. worked on the 128. Oh, the 128. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go to my dad and say, dad, can I have a Commodore 128? Oh, 128 K. What do you need with 128 K? Awesome. Awesome. Germans are known for their economical stance. So he's thinking of the economy. He's like, you don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he might have not have thought so, but my mother brought one home the next week. Good. Oh, Yay. wonderful. So oh, wonderful. I got a Commodore 128 and it was it was amazing. <laughs> yes. And I learned I learned to adjust from more from an art background, which you have to a writing background mm. because I learned to interact over those early BBSs yes. and the early bulletin board systems and quantum link. Yes. Yes. All of a sudden, so, I, all of a sudden I discovered that my words had power <laughs> that's awesome sorceress so we have you know we have such a similar background this is so awesome you know and i knew I we did our paths have crossed yes. <laughs> you know and I go ahead lola you know what i remember from bbs is he shines a lantern doing the um the games he shines a lantern He's the the um, role playing games on the BBS. Do you oh, remember that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He looks so, inside. He shines a lantern. He does this. I remember that. Oh. And then trade wars. Yeah, that was another one. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Zork. Yes, Cyber Zork. Oh. In fact, I. Oh, that was one of the uh, things we put in the show notes was, you know, how I got my start in Linux was it started in 1993 when I downloaded many floppy disks, images oh, of wow. Slackware Linux from my brother's elite BBS. We had uh -huh. elite BBS yeah. and I was his sysop or sister oh. operator. Oh, yes. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, People in the industry was a very well-known BBS, mm -hmm. and um, that's uh, because of that BBS. My brother ended up getting work working directly with Bill Gates. And, uh, <gasps> wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. Cool. That's neat. All right. Yeah. No, it was truly. I mean, it it was. I was sister, so I got automatic access, and I was helping him with it, of course. Oh, but exciting. it had how it would work is if you wanted to join the BBS first, you had to answer. A, a list of like 20 Makes pages of, of questions. Wow, 20 pages? And then, then wow. you know, my brother and the other users would have to research and then they would vote whether you could be in on the board wow. or not. It was, it was extremely That's elite. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I remember right. working, I, I worked with my mom's at BBS, uh, Avatar Online Systems. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much about programming. Yes. And, <clears throat> My mother bought this huge, this massive system that a lot of people could jump on at the same time. Okay. And we had so many problems trying to figure out how to allow all the cards to talk to each other because oh, you have to have a yeah. separate card for each and every line. And if you didn't program it correctly, the cards just wouldn't spit out what they were taking in. Yeah. 
And for a long time, we were we were lost. And when we finally figured it out, it was one line of code we'd forgotten to put in that literally told the cards to just transfer all the information from one card to oh, another. Oh, wow. <laughs> I felt, oh, wow. I felt like, wow. I that is, <laughs> no, that's so cool. We we had a 10 node BBS. Mm -hmm. So that was unheard of, you know, back in yeah. those days because <laughs> it was expensive and, oh, it just re required it, you know, and my parents always wondered why the phone bill was so high. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Uh, yeah, uh, my mother rented a whole office and wow. had a phone company come in to install all the lines. Yeah. Okay. It was that is crazy. awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> so cool. Then we went to we went to one BBS con. Mm, neat. To go figure oh. out all the equipment and okay. all the programming to yeah. make That's it work. Neat. All right. Your mom did that? Yeah, she That's did. So cool. She she is she is quite the woman. She, it's that not you know, awesome. It's like, yeah. My mom didn't learn how to like on Facebook. She told people I didn't learn how to like on Facebook. <laughs> oh, yeah. She did she did not learn how to like on Facebook. And I was like, Mom, you just click the the oh you just click the thumbs up. That's all you do, but she couldn't get it. So Linda, your mom. Online, so online. She's awesome. Yeah, online she's is awesome. very online is is quite a different concept for a lot of people if they have not used computers much. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. like seeing the world in a completely different fashion. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like a new language, really. Because exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. very much a new language. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to have some, a bit of logic too, I think. You have to understand how things fit together. Yeah, how they work. How yeah. things work, yeah. Absolutely. Critical thinking, you need a lot of critical thinking. And good organization. Good organization to see how other things are organized, to see how the distro is organized and everything. And my mother, I, I think the reason that I I expanded my knowledge of the world was because my mother was willing to take chances and oh. learn things that she didn't know before. Mm -hmm. So I watched her do these things. And even when they went completely disastrously wrong, at least I learned that it's okay mm -hmm. to take the chance. It's okay to, to go yeah. out there and learn these Put yourself new things. out there and, exactly. and try it. Even oh. if you don't use them, you're still learning them. Oh, that's yeah. amazing, Linda, that you had that. That is you know, so awesome. That background, that's awesome. So you had a, a mother was so supportive too. Yes, right. <laughs> and she's still dangerous. supportive. She is still supportive oh, of everything I do. I that's agree. awesome. She is super awesome. Well, I switched a little. Um, I'm now drinking Samuel Smith's organic chocolate. Yeah, that's a good one. I like I that one a lot. Oh. I'm, I'm a big fan of Samuel Smith. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> and, uh, and chocolate stout is, uh, this is how, partially how I avoid, you know, slugging down three bars of chocolate a day. Yeah, you got to get your chocolate. You have to have your chocolate bin. Yes. <laughs> one smell of this and it's like you've been breathing in a chocolate bar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've done studies that say, you know, eating a little bit of chocolate every day as well as drinking wine is really good for you. I've and heard that. Good yeah. For your heart. Yeah. That's true. If I had self-control around chocolate, I, I <laughs> do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, if I have that small amount of chocolate, that small amount of chocolate winds up into me going back to 7-Eleven and buying out an entire rack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I literally well, take pictures of stuff I don't buy to remind <laughs> myself not to buy it the next time. Yes. Oh, that's you awesome. Know, you know what I used to do? I haven't done it in a long time, and I'll tell you why I don't do it as much. I, I got my feelings hurt. I would go to, um, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, I'm blanking. It's like a um, bath and body works type place, but with natural products. Um, Lush. Lush. Oh, you yeah. have Lush Those are great. I love yeah. Lush. Well, mm -hmm. you know, they have the facials that you can buy the little tubs and I would buy chocolate 
because I would oh. put it on my face and I would be like, Ooh, it smells no. good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the delicious. Oh, <laughs> and I just awesome. smell it. And then one day, this little snot girl salesperson, I will never forget this. It pissed me off so much. I asked for it and she said, well, that's really for younger skin. <gasps> I was so pissed. That is and, horrible. And, you know, I what a horrible up. thing to say. That's horrible. I hope she got <laughs> fired. I really do. I hope she got no. fired. I was so yeah, that's... pissed. It's but supposed I, to make I your smoke. skin better, make it seem even younger. I mean, what? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm getting it because it smells like chocolate. So I'll yeah. chocolate. That's the reason <laughs> I'm getting it. And I froze. And I'm mad at myself because I froze and I just left. I of should've... course. Inside, I was seething and I was furious. But I froze and I left. And I didn't get it again. Lola, and... don't feel bad because Aww. you know what? Nine times out of ten, I I absolutely hate confrontation. Nine times out of ten, when I'm faced with the same situation, I will do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I it's just probably not a good reaction, but I do it because Aww. I hate being confrontational. And Lola, and it's so and you don't even to me, you don't even look your age, and you have beautiful Thank skin. You. What the heck? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm forty-eight years old. Hey, oh, Lola. that's 48. Next month, 48. Lorla, we're the same age. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm October 1971. Okay, so. I'm May 1971. All right. Oh, so, we're saying I'm, our age on the air. <laughs> I've never been the baby of the group. Yeah. I'm only 45. Yeah. No. 45. I know. Well, you know, as long as Cybernauts in the chat, we're all the babies. Wah, yeah. wah. Oh. We tease him. We, I mean, he's only probably like 80. No. <laughs> Sorry, Cybernaut. Oh, and I forgot to show you what I'm actually drinking the tea in. My. Oh, 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 <laughs> I know. Sorceress oh, in me. That's our spirit animal. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, yay. It's the unicorn. Yay. Oh. <laughs> unicorn yeah. mug. And so for the audio listeners, it's really cute because the unicorn head sticks out of the mug and it's got a, rain, a rainbow, rainbow mane. mane on it. And the head is actually sticking out as a, like a, a yeah. head from the mug. That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> really cute. I have a couple different variations of, of this. I have one that someone handmade that's really beautiful as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, are there, any, are there any distros that use a unicorn? I can't remember. A unicorn you know, penguin. That that might be yes. <laughs> a penguicorn. A penguicorn. Yes. And uh, and in fact, um, L, <laughs> during our our pre show on LWW, I was telling everyone it's so hard to find. I couldn't find a stuffed penguin penguin penguicorn, Aww. and one of our our viewers uh, found one, but it was handmade. So I haven't found one that you can actually buy. That's a commercial. I have to look on Etsy. I bet Etsy might have it. I, I actually did. And that's where oh, that one was okay. made. But okay. it, it was the only one and they're not making any more. But I did find on Amazon a penguin corn t-shirt. So I have a penguin corn oh, t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually go out and find a find a, a a penguin stuffed animal and a unicorn stuffed animal and just combine them. Yeah, yeah, just make your own. <laughs> are, are, are you going Dr. Moreau on this? Yes. <laughs> uh, not, you, not you, Botox. You, not you. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna no, tear you, you apart. Made nervous. You made him nervous. That's that's the first Aww. one, and it's because of you, Jill, that I got him. Oh yay! It's so cute. Now, once you start, it's just like like tribbles, which I have several tribbles right oh, over there. There's a oh, pink the one, with and, and yeah. you know, a big one over there, a motorized one. But but you know, they they they're gonna they're gonna start multiplying because you got one. Now you got to get many, like I do. <laughs> That's but part I, of being a know, Linux chicks. My son, <laughs> my son um, went through all the stuffed animals in the house. And I had about an equal amount as he did. Oh, cool. And he took half of mine with him when he moved out. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you so to... now I'm down by about half. I figure I need to top up. Yeah, definitely. You need to repopulate the species. 
<laughs> They're not born pregnant like Tribbles. <laughs> no, no, exactly. I do have a Tribble, but uh, that Tribble is kept strictly isolated. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't no, need more. No Quadra Triticale laying around. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Star Trek, though. Oh, oh yes. I saw a headline. I didn't read the article because I was trying to um, get on here, but I saw an article that says it's been 25 years since um, Captain Janeway first made her appearance. Yeah, can you believe that? Years. I can't believe it. It's amazing. Since I love Warriors. Kate Mulgrew. I love Janeway, I, Captain Janeway. We were just talking about Orange is the New Black on, I think, the Scanner Drum show last. I think yeah. we were talking mm. about that. Yeah, I, I, I love her. amazing seeing her again, you know. Yeah, she's I amazing in per person on stage. She yeah. is just so yeah, she a is. force. It just has that personality that you just want to hug. And I'm just, she is so aligned to my ideals. And, oh, you know, wonderful. it's just like, I just, I love her. <laughs> Spirit sister. Yeah, yep. which, definitely. <laughs> I remember her talking about her mom on stage. Oh. Mm -hmm. That was yes. Yeah, that was that was one of that was one of the highlights in my Star Trek convention going career. Oh, awesome. And that's yet another thing, Linda, <laughs> uh, so that we are again, we have crossed at conventions. I Aww. have literally been to every uh, creation entertainment Star Trek convention on uh, in uh, the West Coast. Um since I've been 10 years old, except for three. I have missed three because of sickness. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. The, the, the original, the original creation entertainment uh, mm -hmm. convention I went to hired me because I had gotten out of the Navy and I was still called to oh. hold an active weapon as as a bodyguard oh wonderful cool so they hired me for that purpose because there were a few actors that were getting messages yes and all i had to do was just walk around with them and just make sure that you know they were okay oh we're gonna have to talk about that in depth sometime because i've worked for creation entertainment Myself, in fact, um, I started literally when I was 10 years old, just asking okay. them if they needed help with setting oh, up. Awesome. And that's, and then I, I started working with them, helping them set up and break down and doing tech work. And then um, I worked with uh, Dr. Ben very closely because he was the uh, technical director at Creation. And um, we actually had opened a Star Trek store. It was the very first in history uh, Star Trek store in 92. Yeah. Um, and um, I have some wonderful pictures from that. But that, that was amazing. And it was great because we sold a lot of merchandise from Creation, but we sold other Star Trek merchandise, you know, from other vendors as well. Oh, yeah. And it was just, it was amazing. It was an amazing time. That was when it was uh, next gen was, was at its height. And uh, we get, you know, people flying from around the world to come to our store. Yeah. Because, <laughs> so cool. you know, we were the first. So it, it was, it was very, very cool. <laughs> and Star Trek was so inspirational to my, my entrance into science. Yes. Like yes. Every time I watched a show, it, you know, it, I had to go look something up or read something or find something <laughs> out. And it was fantastic. Fantastic for that. Yeah, yes. Same here. Science that. and um, for me, also animation and special effects. Yeah. <laughs> and Shay and I are still. Shay and I are going back and watching the original series again. And, oh, wonderful! And wonderful. We were talking about that. How? Yes, it. You know, we can recognize the date, the dated look of it, but we're not there yet. We're yeah. still not to the point where we have a starship that we can go out into space with. So to us, it's still a goal. Yeah. So it's not dated in that sense. Nope. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. not. We have Going not surpassed it. It's, although those... I'm really, although I'm really hoping that our real starships look a little less like styrofoam. <laughs> Yeah, yes. <laughs> Cardboard. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Gene Ronberry, you know, that vision of 
that man was so incredible it was it's eternal it's it's the human condition it's what our future should be what we should be progressing towards and you know i'm so excited about the new picard series i just can't wait yeah i you know what i was thinking about this the other day i was i was actually angry when they um came out with um cbs all access and was putting star trek on that because to me the next generation i used to watch that on my 19 inch black and white tv i had no furniture so i'd lay on the the carpet in front of the tv with the rabbit ears and watch yeah. it in black and white same and just, here that's to me <laughs> star trek should be accessible to everyone exactly and I'm so angry that, that put it on a streaming service i know yeah. i know it's, it's like a two-sided you want to support them but it upsets me too because especially our it, uh, a lot of the uh, Star Trek fans are older yeah. generation now, yeah. and they don't have access to this. They you don't. Know? They're not going to so, do that. No, and that's it, it. Is a it is a shame, but at the same time, I like what the going on. You know, being internet only provides because oh. they can do now. They can do simultaneous Star Trek shows, and so there is that advantage. But yeah, it's it's really sad because well, and and you know. see, I I think about this too. If I'd known when they first started this, if I'd known that they were going to make a dozen shows, then I probably would have signed up for it because I can justify paying $6 or whatever a month for a dozen shows. Yeah. But when it was just Discovery, I'm like, I'm not going to pay that much for one show, not when I've already got Netflix and Amazon and all this Exactly, yeah. But now they're coming out with all these shows, and I'm like, well, that might be worth it. But at this point, I'm like, I can't afford another (laughs) Yeah. Uh Oh, that's – the the cable companies are going to get us somehow, right? Even though we've cut cut the cord, and and I have too. You're still still being nickeled and dimed with all these services. Exactly. I mean, I, I used to be a proponent of, you know, a la carte, pay for what you want. But that was before I realized that it was going to be six, twelve dollars for each thing. And you're going to want 10 different things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't I I don't mind that they continued on and started making other shows. I'm yeah. even. I'm even kind of over the timeline shift. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that my, <took> some doing. <laughs> my problem with CBS is that they went after the little guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They went after yeah. the fans. I was yeah. pissed about I, that. And I decided right then, you're not getting a dollar of my money yeah. as long as you're still going the after fan the videos. little guy. The fan videos, right? Yeah, the and I, that still pisses me off. Star Trek took, continues. Yeah, you know, the new voyage I, is incredible. I took yeah. all the I took all the money that I would have given CBS for two years, Good. and I gave it to a fan show. Yeah, we, we gave ours the same here, Linda. We gave yeah. ours to Star Trek continues. Good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if if these new shows do happen to show up on Amazon, I will buy them yep. off Amazon. I yeah, but I will still not give CBS a dime for their yeah. streaming service Understand until I, they yeah. either apologize or they stop going after these small, these, these mm-hmm. tiny little fan things that couldn't possibly. And they're mostly them. hobby. Most of them don't charge money. Yeah. They're not paying yeah. them. They're not profiting off of it. No. They're yeah. continuing they're the legacy that yeah. Roddenberry wanted for people that Roddenberry wanted people to look ahead into the future and imagine what the future of the human race could be. Yeah. I fully agree. <laughs> that is just, it's such That's a hard, so it's so hard that. because at the same time you want to be able to watch Star Trek, but you don't want to. Yeah, exactly. No, I, if it comes on Amazon, I, I will pay for the yeah. seasons. Yeah. yeah. But I won't pay, say I won't be, I won't be paying CBS for their it, streaming service. Yeah, even if I miss weird. other stuff that I really want. Yeah. No, understand. I'll and just, it, I, I, I've been taking going it off of Netflix. Is, taking it off of Netflix means that I I have to go back and figure out where I own it. <laughs> All the yeah. Star Trek. I, know. I can't live without Star Trek. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I gotta well, have it. <laughs> well, you could go across the border to Canada and watch it on Netflix. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah, no. It's oh. Available in Canada. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's so sad. They get so much better stuff than we do. It's not fair. 
it's all about those licenses and, and uh, yeah uh, partnerships what's well, weird because you know the all all the actors all the good actors come from canada anyway yes <laughs> yeah, the best sci-fi is made in canada <laughs> So, I feel like I should live in Canada. I watch so much sci-fi from there. Well, mm -hmm. I have a a, <laughs> a change, kind of a shift back to Linux. Okay, but it's a it's a <laughs> difficult question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, many people realize that uh, because of his open stated opinions on sexual assault yeah. and um, some of his previous opinions on pedophilia, Richard Stallman has resigned from MIT as well as resigning as president from the Free Software Foundation. Uh, now, do you think this will actually have a positive effect or is it, is it going to rip us apart and uh, create a giant wound we have to heal from? Oh, I don't think it's going to rip us apart. I, the GNU, you know, it, it, it's it's fortunately in the court system. It's we have that protection. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm still not sure yet whether that was a positive or negative. Um, uh, but I still I do feel that the Free Software Foundation will pick a new president and move on business as usual. Um, what a lot of people also don't realize and I was you know as I was I was going through their show notes I was thinking about this is that Stallman is still the lead of the GNU oh. yeah oh I did not know that yeah he's, he's still okay. he has not been that's his project <laughs> so so but and I actually you know we kind of we saw this coming you know I was seeing all the 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 throwback on on the linux twitterverse and you know he's been outspoken and this is one of those times he really shouldn't have you know because it because of the subject material you know it's such a sensitive subject material and although he's actually said things that were worse in the past but this is what got him because i i kind of feel this is it's 2019 and we have to be so very careful as to what we say and how we say things because of the scrutiny of the public and the media and it's it's sad that we live in those times that we have to be so careful but i'm not justifying that you know he shouldn't have said that <laughs> you know i'm not yeah. but it's just sad that we've come to a state that you have to be so careful in what what you say now and i do um, agree with that i do agree it's sad that we have to be careful but yes. at the same time you know, some of the people who say that, you know, I have to remind them, I don't want to support people who say some of that crap. Yes, though. I know. That's and that's, it. that's the, the hard thing. I mean, Stallman has always been very vocal in, in the political side of things when he probably shouldn't have been. But, you know, I just kind of focus with him on his work in Linux and what he's yeah. done for Linux, the GNU, and the open source software community. Because without him, we wouldn't, and his tenacity uh, and sticking to his beliefs, we wouldn't be where we are today in Linux. But that does not excuse what he said uh, with political issues. So yeah. it's, it's hard. I, I'm having a hard thing, hard time digesting. I, just, I know it's hard. It's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Erasing, erasing the accomplishments is mm -hmm. not a good idea. Yeah. But condemning the behavior. Yeah. Is probably perfectly acceptable. Yeah. You know, yeah. Saying we and, don't, we don't accept yeah. this and, you know, people need to do better than this. Yeah. Well, it was like when when Linus stepped down for several yeah. months because mm -hmm. of comments that he had made, and he realized he shouldn't, you know, he he needs to to cut that back a lot because he's in a professional world now of Linux, and it was a good good for him to leave for a while and come back, and uh, um, maybe Stallman will do the same. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I, I mean, I. I hope things can smooth out. Yeah. But society in general is so sensitive right now. Mm -hmm. that yeah. They are that, that in general, if you say something like that, they will drag up mm -hmm. the depth. Everything of you said when you were in high school. 
And, you know, I was, I was recently talking to some people about that, how this is exactly what happened to Roseanne Barr. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she was she really sick crap. and it was horrible. She made those comments, but she was not thinking right. She was, she was on drugs at the time for medical reasons, was not thinking right. Yeah. And I that ruined say, her career. Now, you know? I will say this though. So, um, some people said the same thing about um, Mel Gibson when he went on mm. his racist tirade. They said, well, he was oh. strong. But another person made the point, you don't say that stuff unless it's in your mind already. Yeah, there, there is some of that. But, but I know with Roseanne, she had very serious um, bouts of depression. Uh, she I was know. just interviewed recently about yeah. that, how she doesn't even remember half of that so yeah <laughs> it's like yeah, but I mean, yeah has, it doesn't excuse that the I, know. Said, what but, do you, <sighs> I mean if you it, it's, 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 all, so it's a tightrope it's a tightrope because you, you feel for people with mental issues you really do but at what yeah. point do you have to say you know you're still saying stuff i can't get behind I know. You know? i can't i mean you can say yes it's mental illness but you know you can't support it it's 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 tough it's it, a hard it is it's yeah <laughs> I, yeah. I agree that's there are, so hard there are some things when it involves words if mm -hmm. somebody looks back on it and says you know i was wrong mm -hmm. i've learned better than that now well, that's okay it, yeah you know it is a forgivable situation yeah. but uh -huh. there are there are times when society as a whole will not forgive it and they choose yeah. They, they choose a person as a scapegoat, as a focus for all their anger. Yeah. yeah. I hope that it doesn't necessarily happen, that he becomes the scapegoat for all of that anger. Yeah, yeah. It turns into something constructive where Good. we just insist that people who come after Richard Stallman not engage yeah. in, in that behavior. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just like Linus, you know, has, yeah. has, has been learning. Yeah. Very good point. Very good point. I mean, we Both got some basic rules. I've got yeah. some basic rules. Sexual assault is bad. Yeah. Sexism is bad. Racism is bad. <laughs> Let's just get along. If we can yes. with that, it's, I have a very low bar, but that's pretty much the rules right there. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't mess with politics and religion, you know? Right. Just don't. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's I right. Can... That's why at the dinner table, everybody should be talking about the beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you oh, go, Linda. There you go. And, or Star and, Trek. Or, or Star, Star Trek. Trek. <laughs> and I also learned, I learned the whole hard way not to assume that just because I have one thing in common with someone, I'm going to have other stuff. Yeah. So just because they love Star Trek doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything. Yeah. So exactly. that's why I just don't, I tend not to talk about politics. <laughs> yeah, I don't assume same here. someone is on the same wavelength as me. Now, if they we, start don't stuff, we, don't, we don't necessarily have to agree on everything to be friends no, either. No. I, I definitely yeah. don't agree with everything with you, Lola. No. Yeah. It's definitely it's okay. One of my best friends in the whole right. world. And likewise. And we have discussions and sometimes we have different views of things and that's okay. We don't have to agree, but yeah. you know, we share the basis. Racism is wrong. Sexism yeah. is wrong. Sexual assault, Sexual assault is wrong. Is wrong. Yeah, right. definitely. Sex yeah. trafficking. Uh, sex trafficking <laughs> yeah. is wrong. Yeah. That's all. Those are very bad things. And as long as someone is on that baseline with me, we're cool. Yeah. Yeah. Consent is good. Consent <laughs> yes. is necessary. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. I mean, you don't have to sign a waiver and say, yes, I will do this. I mean, I think that's a bit much. But if someone says no. Yes, the no means no. True story. I had to tell someone that no means no. Yeah. That was the I've, fifth time I said no. I had to yeah. say no means no. And that's a horrible thing to have to say. Unfortunately, as ladies, we've probably almost every female has dealt with that before. Yeah. And yeah. it's horrible. I've dealt with it like three times in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And being raped, almost being raped and yeah, know, the exactly. whole nine yards. Almost, exactly. <laughs> almost every woman I think has yeah. probably dealt some with, form. with yeah. in some form. We do have a, you know, a, a, yeah. a commonality of experience there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And Definitely. I keep hoping the next generation won't have to experience it. Yes, exactly. Uh, so. Exactly. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to go away, but hopefully people will be more aware. There's more awareness. And that's one of yes. the differences when we were kids, you know, and I growing up in the seventies, you know, people mm -hmm. didn't talk about it. It was quiet, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly, Linux Book Pro, as Bill and Ted once said, be excellent. Be excellent to, be excellent to each other. I love be it. Excellent. <laughs> that is a fantastic thought. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it's also fantastic. Humble Bundle? It is. Yeah. Oh, I'm on Humble Bundle. And they have, they have a network and security <laughs> certification bundle that I'm going to buy. And I'm on Barry GE's thing too. <laughs> Fantastic. I, yeah. I know we have the, uh, we've already put out the, um, the Bloom County 2019 by IDW link. Oh, but so cool. Go ahead and hand me that link, Lola, and I will put that out as well. Okay. Let me um, tell and tell us all about it. Okay, I have to make it because I came in under Barry GE, but then when I went to this, it took the Barry GE out. Oh, sometimes yeah. that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I still think it has the cookies, so I still think it's counting. Uh, that link is dead. Hold on, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta figure out. Okay, take your time. Gotta, it's all right. I, think I, I forgot a question mark somewhere. I'm supposed to do the question mark. Where does the question mark come in? Oh. Well, we're grateful for Humble Bundle at Linux Gamecast as well, of course. <laughs> it still, gosh darn it, it took, when I went to the link, it took out what I did. Okay. All right, hold on. Let's just, I'm just going to do, oh, no, it did. It has it. It has the Barry G. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put it in the Twitch thing of Mahuji Boom Booms. Cool. Got it in the Twitch. Excellent. I'll put I'll it in our while yeah. while you're telling us all about that one, I'm yeah. gonna take a bio break for like you go. two Give seconds. Me a pair of wire. Awesome. Oh, no, that's the role playing that I did. Hold on. Gosh darn it. I'm trying to do it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna get this. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um so I put the link for the role playing by accident. I meant to put the network one, but I put that in the Twitch link. So if you go to that. And then you do the eight bundles on the left. It'll show you all the bundles. And one of them is a network and security. And as long as you go in under the very good link, it's supposed to keep a cookie on there for like a few weeks or something. So you'll be mm. supporting us. Um, so let's see if I can do this and get the very good on here. Hold on. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I'll read out what's on here. Let's see if. All right, I'm going to put this link in the Twitch. Um, can Cybernaut or Linux Book Pro or somebody tell me if this is the right way to do the link? I think it is, or did I forget? I think that's right. Anywho, so I'm going to read what's on this. Um, I always just go ahead and get the full one because you can, you know, pay a dollar and you get a few, pay eight dollars and you get a few more, pay 15 and you get them all. So I always do that because you might as well. Um, it's got, it's a lot of Windows stuff, which kind of goes a little bit against what we're talking about. But if you're professional in tech, it's mm -hmm. good to have because uh, with a lot of businesses, they still use Windows. So it's a Windows Server 16 study guide, practice test. Um, yeah. A plus complete review guide, a lot of CompTIA security plus review guide, um, network plus review guide from CompTIA. Um, CCNA routing and switching complete study guide, AWS certified sysops administrator, um, networking, associate cloud engineer study guide, uh, Oracle, more Oracle. Awesome. There's Linux there. <laughs> oh, so you get a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. $15. Between this and Boing Boing, I've got so much learning material. Mm. It's awesome. Yeah, they, they just uh, not too long ago had a bundle that was all Linux books, which was okay. awesome. Yeah. From, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to do the 15 dollars. I'm trying to do it right now. But my credit card is is giving cash back if I use PayPal. Yeah, humble bundle. 
I love humble bundle. I love and humble it, bundle. Yes. Your we, humble your humble bundle purchase helps to keep us on the air. Mm-hmm. And uh, we thank you so much for your mm-hmm. support. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And I just bought it. I just bought it. That poor little discover card. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to say that out loud what I use, but oops, okay. <laughs> yeah, so not, not only can you read some great science fiction books and get yes. some really good uh, um, yes. uh, tech books, but you can also uh, play those Linux games. A lot of them yeah. on the Humble Bundle. <laughs> yeah. I just got, they had a bundle for Bane books, book B-A-N, Bane sci-fi books, and I've been reading one of those. I got that bundle. Oh, it's, cool. So exciting. It just makes me so happy. Yeah. I was yeah. really happy when they started doing the science fiction books. That was yeah. that was cool. <laughs> so awesome. I'm like, let's see what other bundles we got. Game developer, mm-hmm. Python, uh, RPGs. That's so exciting to me. It's so exciting to me. Well, I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about Linux Gamecast because, <laughs> because I, not only do I help support Linux Gamecast, I yes. found so many good games through them. Yay. <laughs> I, they have all kinds of reviews and, and everything. Can you tell us? Tell us more about Linux Gamecast, what Linux Gamecast does. Okay, so uh, we could start from the beginning. It was the very first um, uh, uh, network to stream, uh, well, it was at one time just the, the first show, Linux Gamecast Weekly, which is actually on right now <laughs> as we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch the VOD later. <laughs> but yeah, we, we rewind. We we listen to it again and again. Yes. So it was the first um, Linux gaming network ever. Uh, 2012 is about when, you know, time Venn started producing and, and doing streams of games on Linux. And of course, that was before Steam was using, you know, had uh, Linux support. So, and we were also the first uh, uh, podcast or video podcast to stream completely on Linux. So that makes us very, very unique. And as I was just thinking about it recently, uh, we are the longest, Linux Gamecast Weekly is the longest continual running show on Linux on the internet right now. (laughs) Wow. I was was just realizing that. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Because it was it was Linux Action Show from Jupiter Broadcasting, but they they don't have that show anymore. Mm-hmm. They you know turned it into Linux Unplugged and and Linux Action News and whatnot. But so yeah, it's the 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 longest continual uh, Linux stream show. And so we talk about Linux news uh, reviews, not just gaming Linux news and reviews, but we also have a regular Linux news show, which I co-host on Wednesdays called Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. Yeah, it's a funny name that Jordan Jordan came up with. <laughs> it's actually really cute. Yeah. And that, that's the first time I've ever heard you say the whole name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so, uh, but it, it started because of Linux um, and gaming on Linux and, and Ven had that vision, you know, no one's doing this. And so let's do this. And Ven Stone is the producer and the creator of Linux Gamecast. And so he started the uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly, which is the big Saturday show, and then several game streams. And then he started um, doing LWDW. So, and that's... When I, I came in, I actually, it had been going on several years be- before I came co-host. And it was originally the co-host, it was it was Ven Stone, Pedro Mateus, and Matthew Commendon of Lutris. So I literally yeah. replaced Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there was a year hiatus in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I know and, I've, I've, I, Matthew actually came down and, and um, had a beer with us. And yes. He, I was so happy he came he to is, visit you guys. He is, he is a very interesting person yes. with, with lots of experience in getting it to work. Yeah. 
Yeah. Through Lutris. He's, he is amazing. And I actually would have started with the, the show a lot earlier. Um, in fact, several years earlier, but I couldn't at the time because I was taking care of uh, uh, t- caretaking parents and whatnot. <laughs> so, so, but also I was just, I was ready for a change because I've been teaching for 30 years, um, computer animation and motion graphics and as well as doing a freelance computer animation, which mm-hmm. I have, one of the reasons I have lots of computers because <laughs> I have my render farm. But um, yeah, it was, it was, I just, I needed a change and I wanted to come back to podcast, go to po- learn all about podcasting and get involved because I have a lot of broadcasting experience as well mm-hmm. under radio. So, I did not know that. Yeah, I did sick. I did a show. For 16 years, it started at the, co- oh. the college radio station, and it grew from there. And then I got syndicated in Europe and and whatnot. Oh, that's so, awesome. what wow. was it yeah. about? Oh well, actually, it was music, kraut rock, oh. early electronic music, oh. Tangerine Dream, Kraftwerk, all all oh. the cla- all the, yeah. And I actually, you know, had one of the very first electronic music websites back in the in the early 90s at the birth of the web. Wow. And I got uh, the artists sending me their music to play on my show. And uh, several of the musicians contacted me and said, we're going to, we want to run your, your show on our, our network in Germany. And so I had to snail mail cassette tapes yeah. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> over the, Ger- over the Germany, you know, this is before the internet. So <laughs> this was a, a late eighties, early nineties, uh, actually up through the 2000. <laughs> And so, but I've also had interned at several radio stations here in Los Angeles. So I had a background in radio and helped start the student station at the, our community college and the one I work at. <laughs> that was cool. And have you ever thought about doing a podcast of your own? Yes. Yeah, I have. I have. But I, I just, I wanted to become part of Linux Gamecast so bad because they were gaming in Linux. And I just, I knew that was... The two uh, two things that I love come together. So, and I knew, you know, when I would listen to Ven's show, they sounded so good. And I really appreciated that coming from, you know, broadcasting in the radio background and just the subject matter, Linux and gaming and how opening and inviting Linux Gamecast was and that he would, you know, uh, Ven and Jordan and Pedro would interact with the community and I could go into chat and talk to them. And we'd stay up till two and three in the morning talking Linux and computer hardware and building computers. <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started. And uh, then asked me to come on and uh, um, I, was, uh, I was very honored. And it's been an incredible ride ever since. It's, it's been awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. And we, we always enjoy listening to you. Always. Aww, thank you so much. And you are... Oh, Chi and Linda. And and I've been saying Chi because that's what Sandman told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy Ultimagus, who worked with with uh, Shay on Root Gamer. So excuse me if I s- I've said your name wrong this whole time because I asked Sandy and he said Chi. So I've Aww. been saying Chi. He has yeah. good Chi. He has good Chi. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's actually Che, but okay. <laughs> you, you guys never said anything when I would say Che, so <laughs> I didn't know. And I'm I apologize for that, but you get to blame Sandy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, so Linda and Che are huge uh, contributors to Linux Gamecast and have been our patrons for a very long time, and we love them. They're friends. They've been big supporters. Um, Chi, who came from Root Gamer, you know, that was one of the very first uh, Linux gaming uh, jur- journalist websites that Linux Gamecast used to use for their material. So you guys have been part of our family for a very long time. And I had discovered both of you on Google+. Plus. Oh, I'm sad. Oh, Google Plus was gone. This. I was thinking about that last night. <laughs> looking through everything and I went, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't so, found a replacement for it, but uh, at least I can talk to somebody. At least I can talk to people yeah. who have, you know, who have an interest in the Linux world and people yeah. who I have, you know, a wonderful connection with. And 
this is one of my outlets. It's great. Yeah. Oh, and that's how I found very good entertainment. And you guys, you know, Google mm-hmm. Plus, because that's where the, originally our Linux Gamecast community was. And now we're, of course, all over Twitters. <laughs> and that's how everyone, you know, that's how everyone can contact me. Go ahead, Lola. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I was going to say, we signed up for MeWe, and I've been bad about not going there. I just, I don't think I can handle any more. I've, I've got Twitter and Facebook, and I think uh-huh. that's fine. No, under understand um i'm also the community organizer for linux gamecast so i'm very active on on twitter and all the linux all the linux communities and all the developers and the ceos of the different companies and you know uh i whenever we do our show i tweet it out to um every developer whether it's small and big or every linux topic i always i always uh you know at at the people that we uh, talk about so they can find out, you know, about us covering them on the show. And it's, it's actually really rewarding to have the small developers get really excited. Oh my gosh, you covered my project. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so directly yeah. you. exactly. And it was like a recent one, you know, he, he retweeted my tweet and he said, oh, he goes, nice. wow, I know my project has made it when I've gotten covered by a, you know, a Linux, uh, uh, Linux podcast, <laughs> and see it means something to them. Yeah, and it's nice. it, it it makes me feel good because we cover the big, you know, the the Red Hats and the IBMs and the Debians, mm-hmm. and we we cover the small developers of little projects on GitHub and GitLab, and awesome. uh, Raspberry Pi projects. So it's, it feels it's, the same way for 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 breweries and whatever. Yeah, you guys. I've what, had a, a yeah. few very small brewers get extremely excited that you know we cover their beer yeah yeah so same th- thing you're th- you're unique because you guys are doing a you know doing um uh, covering the different breweries and different different types of alcohol and whatnot but there's no other podcast that's like you that's doing like a journalistic style so you're yeah. u- unique in that space okay. <laughs> i have i have yet to see well i've i've seen youtube uh I've seen YouTubers with women doing beer, but oh, okay. I hmm. have yet to see a whole lot of podcasts with women in our yeah uh, space. weekly basis, yeah, yeah. or yeah. biweekly, yeah. Well, it, speaking about games, if, <laughs> <laughs> if our fans are into games, keep watching our Twitch channel because we're actually going to start playing a brewery game. Oh. Wonderful. We're gonna, we're gonna, even though it's not technically a Linux game, we will be playing it on Solus through Steam. It's cool. called Brewer. <laughs> okay. So uh, right now, right now, Che, the producer Che and I will be switching off, and we'll be seeing uh, who makes the better Brewer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> and Jill, um, Cybernaut, our friend he said if you're ever at the university of san diego to hit him up oh cool okay i'm in san diego a couple times a year oh, <laughs> yeah i don't awesome. think he's on twitter does yeah. he does, i don't think he does he's on me but i don't think he does twitter oh okay and um you can find me on twitter at jill oh. underscore linux girl okay mm-hmm. cool. yeah awesome lola where can we find you at Lola Laracy, L-A-R-I-S-C-Y. That's the, where I'm most active. Awesome. You can find me at L Tepler on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You can also find me as uh, Sorcerer Zero. I'm pretty picky uh, about Facebook, but I will talk to yeah. everybody on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I will well, talk they, about they, any topic where my family and co-workers are, so. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to be pretty locked down on Facebook. I that, pretty much that's a thing, it. yeah. <laughs> Dogs and cats, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to send a question to uh, either to any of us uh, here on Berry Good Entertainment, you can check out at Berry G E. That's B E E R Y G E on Twitter, and we're also on MeWe. Yay. And we're also on Twitch, so uh, make sure you keep an eye out on that Twitch channel. And an RSS podcast feeder everywhere. 
<laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, this podcast feed are everywhere. We that, uh, we yeah, push it through, so we push it through SoundCloud, but you yeah. can put it on any any feed you like. I'm I'm using my favorite podcaster. That's how I listen to very good entertainment. <laughs> Which one do you use? Um, I like Podcast Addict. Okay, I've never <laughs> that one. Yeah. I'll have to try that one. There are a couple of podcasts. Uh, my, I, I don't want to, I don't want to bad mouth my, uh, my Uh-oh. podcast app. It's yeah. Not, it's not working for me anymore. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to try some more, uh, some different podcast apps. Yeah. Podcast <laughs> Attic and Podcast Go. Those are kind okay. of the two I go yeah. back and forth on because they, they, so they have a timer and they support, you know, yeah. like, it, that's when I'm mostly listening to most of the podcasts is at night and I want it to turn off like in an hour or so. So I'm not going to sleep to all the voices. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, we, I sleep better without you know the voices, but I want to hear them, hear their shows. And then when I get yeah. tired, <laughs> then we actually listen to our podcasts while, while I'm cooking dinner down in the garage. So we yes. cast mm-hmm. it, we cast it to the TV to cool. play the yes. TV. as as i know could you guys show us <laughs> show us whenever we're live you guys are awesome show it. yeah lola they always the uh, the paste in chat um our oh, show when it goes live on their tv oh, they're, awesome. they're watching it on their tv in the garage okay, it's awesome that's cool. okay while we're while we're cooking the chicken and <laughs> yeah. burning <laughs> yeah besides audio podcasts i listen to tons of Linux video podcasts and it's like I that's most of my viewing nowadays is is video podcasters and nothing wrong with that yeah that's that's been it's my love and what I love to do <laughs> so. it's funny at night though uh I can't actually listen to podcasts at night when I'm trying to go to sleep I have to actually read oh okay yeah that I don't um, know I I, yeah. I don't have to I don't it doesn't have to be a physical book yeah, but I have to have like I have to be reading or the, the like noise in my ears makes me wake up. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I usually listen to Audible, and then yeah. I'll set my room mm-hmm. like ten or twenty minutes. I love Audible. Audible is awesome. It's amazing. Well, guys, I think that's gonna do it for us for today. Mm-hmm. Please do check out our Humble Bundle. If you like what we yeah. do on Twitch, please hit that follow button. We mm-hmm. thank you for all of your follows, all of your attention, all of your love. We hope that you have a really great beer, wine, tea, whatever you're drinking. Have, whatever you're drinking. Yeah. Whatever you <laughs> we got. hope you enjoy it. And we hope that you have a really great day. Thanks Aww. a lot. Thank you guys so much for having thank me on. You. Love you, everyone. Love you, too.